And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint. And a breakpoint, again, that's a place, that's a marker that you place into the, the code that tells the debugger to stop once it reaches that point. So let me go ahead and set a break, uh, which is just you do by typing B. And I'm going to set it for main. So when it hits the main function, it's going to stop and then wait for further instructions. All right. So we've got that set. So let me just go ahead and hit R. And we're going to try to run it again. And let me go ahead and restart it. OK. So uh, obviously, main is right at the beginning, so we stop right away. Now we could type next, or just a letter N, and we can go see what comes next here. And as you can see, it actually printed out a little bit of code there. So we've got the next part. We can see we're at the beginning of a for loop. Let's see what comes next. We've got a little. All right. So one thing I want to do is we've stepped through a couple of commands here. So let's see what our variables look like. And you can do that using info local and we've got two variables that are locally visible within this scope we've got an i that's equal to zero and we've got a counter that's equal to two so uh, let's step through it and see how the variables change Let me try running it again. Okay, now that's interesting. So it looks like i is a negative number. And I'm sure you probably saw this you know, five minutes ago. But as you could tell in the for loop, we have what should be a simple start at 0 and then stop at 5. But of course, you know, this, this is, we're going to make pretend that there was a typo. And instead of doing a plus plus, you know, I did a minus minus. And so instead of going up, we're going down. So effectively, we have an infinite loop. So, you know, what I'll do here is terminate out of this. And well, actually, before I do that, I just wanted to show you another thing here. You can print the contents of a variable just by typing P and then I and it actually will tell you the variable now the the dollar sign one that's a internal variable for GDB uh, you don't have to worry about that for now now we might be able to actually break out of this loop even without editing the code even though we're in an infinite loop because we're in a debugger we might be able to get out of this and of course, because the logic is that as long as i is less than 5, it'll keep running. So what I can try doing, of course, is just um, use the print again, and then i. And then I'm going to set it equal to 6. So now it equals 6. So let's go ahead and step through this again. OK. So we broke out of it. So that just shows you, you can actually edit stuff on the fly using, using GDB. So it's kind of useful sometimes if you're troubleshooting, just to be able to step through it like that and you know, analyze it and make changes you know, as you go along. Um, so if you want to clear your breakpoints, you just type the word disable. And you no longer have any breakpoints. So if we, well, I'm not going to run it again. So and uh, if you want to quit, just type the word quit, and you're all done. So that's just a quick introduction to GDB. So let's take a look at Valgrind. So Valgrind is a tool that specializes in detecting memory leaks. And even good programmers uh, often miss memory leaks because they're notoriously easy to miss if you just try to check for them manually. 
So a lot of um, a lot of software developers will actually use specialized tools for this purpose because it's just so easy to miss if you tr if you try to do everything manually. So Valgrind is a tool that you can use for that. And one thing to consider is that it's important to check for memory leaks because it's not just a performance issue. A uh, memory leak can actually be used as a vector for malware to access parts of memory that they're not supposed to. So that's another reason why it's good to use some kind of tool to check your program to make sure that it doesn't have any obvious memory leaks. Okay, so let's take a look at Valgren in action. So I've got another program here that I want to try running. And the way you start Valgrind is actually almost exactly the same way you start GDB. Literally you just type Valgrind and then you start your program. And again, you include the dot forward slash if it's local. And you can see here, it does have a leak detected. It says definitely lost 10 bytes in one blocks. That, that's how it tells you that there's a memory leak. It gives you these statistics at the end. So I'm going to actually take a look at the source code here. Now this is a pretty contrived example here, but just to kind of illustrate the point. So you've got a, an array that's a size of 10, and we've got a for loop, and this is just kind of a classic off by one error message. You start at zero, and then go to 10, uh, but in this case, I left a greater than an equal, or I'm sorry, a less than an equal sign instead of just a less than sign. And as a result, it actually goes out of, you know, out of bounds on the array. So let's try Valgrind on a program that actually works well and doesn't have any memory leaks. So let's try Valgrind. Delete mode. That runs the program. And so notice this time we don't have a leak summary. It just says all heap blocks are freed, no leaks are possible. And that's what you want to see when you run a program with Valgrind. So to conclude, there are debugging tools available to make it easier to detect and troubleshoot your problems with code. And there are a lot of good free tools available. And that's it. Thank you for watching.